Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. This is a year in review for the tap cooler. I know there's a handful of reviews out there on the tap cooler, but this is after using it for a year. I use it at least every month. Sometimes I'll do four different taps and I'll do it two or three weeks apart. So I've used a ton out of this thing for a year and I'm gonna give you my feedback on it. Good, bad, indifferent. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it. If you buy the tap cooler, it comes with a ton and I'll show you on the back here, you can see ton of details and instructions and what the parts are called, all that lovely stuff. But you're gonna get the typical barb for your CO2. And that goes in over here. Yeah, I've never used it. Uh, one, I got the number one upgrade they recommend is the tap cooler ball lock adapter for the CO2 inline. So I know some people have complained and said, you know, they should just give you all the accessories at once. But some of the accessories you don't need, and I kind of get it. And yeah, I think the thing is a little expensive for the size and what it does, but it's a nifty tool. It's a useful tool. Um, you'll see I'll leave, leave a link up where I did a comparison for bottle fillers versus counter pressure fillers and what the big differences are. And you'll see this one in here, which I like a lot, but you'll see a reason of why I use the tap cooler over that. If you're a one man show, the tap cooler is definitely the way to go. So you take your ball lock, disconnect, put it on there or connector, and that's it. And you'll run your CO2 right from inside, unless you have another hose coming out, it goes on here. And this is, like I said, it's a long term tap cooler, counter pressure bottle filler for forward sealing faucets. That's what it's meant, forward sealing faucets, like the inner tap. And there's many, many, many different forward sealing taps out there. One of the problems I saw right off the bat when I went to buy one was people were complaining that these little O-rings broke and would snap. And some of these people had only used it a few times and were complaining that those kept breaking. I will tell you, if you try to take this and shove it into a dry hole like that, you're gonna have a problem because it's hard to get it in. It's hard to get it out. It's obvious there's an issue there. It's very snug. So you can either use some of the food grade grease that you would use for you know some of your seals or what I do, which is sitting right in front of my face and I can't find it, so I just take a little bit of star sand, I spray it down, and it slides right in. You gotta lubricate it up a little bit to shove it in. That's it, boom, done. Now, I will say sometimes I've got to twist and pull to get it back out, but that was pretty simple. But if it's been sitting in there for a while and I've been filling a lot of bottles, I have had times where I've had to kind of tug on it a little. So what you do here is you have this telescoping piece, and I'm just gonna go over the basics. It fits in like that. It seals over that silicone or inside that silicone piece. And your CO2 is over here and you press this button and it purges it. I don't usually hear the CO2 get out easy. So I usually move my bottle around a little bit and I'll hear it kind of make its little CO2 fart, should we say? And that's it. And then once I have that, I kick the tap on, I fill the bottle. The bottle gets really close to the very top. And once it gets really close to the top and I got just a little bit of foam, I stop it, I pull it out. If you do bottle filling before you start a kegging, you know this displaces enough liquid that when you pull it out, the liquid's gonna go back down. A little trick that I have found because this thing drips and drips and drips. And of course it sticks just over. Yeah, so this doesn't catch anything my floor catches it all. So I put a paper plate and some paper towels down there. But once you lift it up and it's sticking out a little bit, hit that pressure relief valve again for CO2. It's gonna blow a little air, but it's gonna let a lot of the liquid that's in this pipe drip down into the bottle. You may go past the two fingers as far as rule if you're going into competition, so be careful on that, but it will let the liquid out. Now, so of course, as soon as you move the bottle, it keeps dripping. If your bottle's shorter, like a Sierra Nevada bottle, the telescoping piece retracts a little bit. That way you're always filling on the bottom, which makes it the best sense. You don't wanna just pour the beer in there. One of the items, if you have an inner tap system and you have a lot of the little parts, should we say, that you can replace your tips, take that off, put this on. This works too for if you need the hose piece for the extension. This fits right in this hose and that, and it, this is an air hose, but a liquid hose will work too. This is just for an example. They call it the Tap Cooler Filler Extension Tube Kit. If you don't have it, then fine if you need it. I didn't need it, but I do have this if I ever wanted to do something like that, but then I'd be on the floor filling my bottles, which is not my 
ideal situation. Another complaint they had was that if you had their, if hopefully I'm saying this right, Paralink or Paralink 500 series forward sealing faucets, this didn't fit properly. So this actually unscrews and you can take it off and you can buy the adapter or connector just for that type of faucet and put it on your tap cooler and not have that kind of problems anymore. They also make a pressure relief drain tube, which simply hooks over here. And this is what you do too, as you're filling the bottle, if you open this bad boy up, and I'll show you exactly what it looks like in here. It's got a little poppet, just like you'd have on a keg. That's all it is. It goes back in here and we tighten it back up. But if you have it open wide, you're gonna be letting a lot of air out and the, the beer may bu bubble up a little bit. If you restrict it, which helps to create more pressure, it'll push those bubbles back down, keeping them from foaming up. And you can control that. Now, if you have a lot of foam for some reason, it'll come up, it'll start to push through and it'll actually come out of this hole. That's why they have that pro pressure relief valve drain tube. You can put it and run that tube into something to let it drain. They also have, and this is only a great fermentations that I've seen so far. I, I like a lot of the other online. I like my local homebrew shop who doesn't carry that. But I bought these recently. And this is why I was talking about people complaining that when they first got it, these O-rings were breaking and snapping. I've had this for a year. Now I do the star sand almost every single time to make sure that it's not gonna be hard to shove in. If something's not going in, you don't force it, there's a problem. So putting a little bit of star sand on here, I guess has helped me because my O-rings still spin on there. I can feel them move, but I'm starting to get little chips and nicks that you can probably not see on camera. They're very fine. I've had to use magnifying glasses to see them once I felt one of them. And I can see a, a little nick over here and a tiny nick up there. What I did, uh, let's see it on camera here and here. What I did is I bought two things that I knew would probably eventually break. One, the little plastic connector, kind of like duotites have, that goes over here for my CO2 release. And I bought two sets, whoa, almost dumped everything over. I bought two sets of O-rings. Two sets. That way, if I ever break an O-ring or it breaks on its own or whatever it may be, I can just simply replace it. And Great Fermentations carries everything. You could rebuild this whole thing from scratch minus the main block, kind of like the engine block. Everything else they sell. They sell that there's a screw in here and you got to keep that nice and snug. This is for the CO2 to release. If that's not nice and snug, you will have constant CO2 going through here. I keep it at about two to three PSI. I hit this and sadly, most of the time I have to turn it off inside there because it still is pushing CO2 into the bottom and creating foamy beer. I did reach out to Tap Cooler when I first got this thing and I heard nothing and it was just crickets. And hopefully if Tap Cooler ever sees this video, maybe they'll reach out to me and go, we're sorry, here's what we recommend. But you know, that would be one area. The support, at least back when I got it, was zero. So I'm hoping that has changed. I haven't reached out to them for anything or even on that same issue. I just gave up and said, I'll deal with it. I have half a workaround. I really don't care. I had bigger issues to deal with at the time and don't want to deal with it anymore. But it's a very, very nice system. And I'll leave a link to the other video where I did comparisons of bottle fillers and counter pressure fillers. And you can see why I like this if you're more than a one man show. But if you're just a one person filling bottles, the tap cooler hands down is one of the easiest ones to use. Like I said, the only issues I have is of course, the rings will wear out. That's with anything, not a big issue. The CO2 does leak occasionally. It's a little annoying, kind of frustrating. I wish I knew how to fix that, or maybe it's not fixable. Maybe it's a bug in the system. I don't know. But other than that, it's a great system. I will say if you're up on one of those tower systems, one of the complaints I've seen is that you have to have some sort of tubing because you just can't get your bottle under it. There's nothing's perfect for anyone. I like it, it works for me, it does a good job. It allows me to fill bottles and hand them out to friends and colleagues and people that I meet that you know have seen my YouTube videos and or even haven't and I'm doing a little marketing, you know, telling them about it. So I'll leave links down below. Um, the biggest link I'm gonna leave down below is to Great Fermentations. They carry everything on this thing. You know, I, I can leave links to some of the other brewery places if you wanna buy it from somewhere else. If you decide to buy it or you need parts, you need parts, go to Great Fermentations. Like I said, I don't know what the deal is, but they are the only person that seems to carry all 
the parts and the replacement parts. And eventually you may need some replacement parts. So that's it. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it. Thank you again.